Hey everyone, it is a great time of year, isn't it? This is genuinely my favorite time of year. I love the colors, I love the weather, I love the smells. So let's talk about some of the best things that you can do while here in the fall. Maybe you live here, or maybe you're just visiting because you wanna live here. We got the best fall activities coming right up. So if you ask me, and this will reflect in most of the activities that we're about to talk about, the weather is just the best thing about fall. You know, some of the summer activities, like the water kind of sport activities, it's gotta be really hot for that. And you know, obviously some of the wintertime activities, you, you, a lot of them you gotta have snow for that. So it's neither too hot or too cold, but that's why fall is the perfect time of year for just being outside, for just going on hikes, going on nature walks, going fishing, <laughs> and those are some of my favorite activities. First thing to do, Smith Rock. Now I could put this on all of the seasonal best things to do videos that I think we're gonna have coming up, but I'll try not to put that on the rest of them because I think the best time is right now. So Smith Rock is north of Redmond in a tiny town called Terrebonne, and it's, for lack of a better phrase, a gigantic rock outcropping, I guess you would call it. It's a world-class rock climbing destination with about 2,000 different routes. And if you're a rock climber, everyone knows about Smith Rock. It's just these incredible rock structures that just jet out of the ground. Then to top it all off, if the, if the rocks themselves weren't pretty enough, You've got the Crooked River just kind of meandering through the middle of it in some sort of like Hollywood fantasy type movie. It's just, it's just incredible. But it's not CGI, it's real. It's simply incredible. And then the best part, well, if you're a rock climber, it, that is, that's the best part. If you're not a rock climber, the best part is that there are a number of hikes that take you around this incredible landscape. Um, it's easy to spend a day there hiking, taking in the beauty, and of course, again, like I said before, the weather is just perfect in the fall for doing that activity, quite honestly, because it's not too hot and it's not too cold, because it can be both at different times of the year at Smith Rock. Sometimes in the summer, it's really hot. Pumpkin patch. If you're heading up that way, you might as well stop and check out the pumpkin patch. It's not a bad way to spend a day. Go to Smith Rock and then finish it off with a trip to the pumpkin patch. It's classic. At least that's what we do. So there are actually a couple of pumpkin patches out there in Terrebonne, and they're both great. There's the uh, Double D Ranch and then there's Smith Rock Ranch. We usually go to the Smith Rock Ranch pumpkin patch, but each has their own following and each is great. In fact, some of our close friends we were just talking to a week ago, they swear by going to the Double D Ranch, it's their favorite. So to each their own. And whichever one you go to, they both have a lot of the same things. I mean, all kinds of stuff, right? There's a market place where you can buy, you know, different specialty kinds of pumpkins and other produce and other products there. Hay rides, kids corral, train rides, there's, there's you know, a market. pony rides, there's horse-drawn carriages. Of course, there's, there's a huge corn maze. Little tip, get the map. The last year that I went, it was pretty challenging. <laughs> oh, and my favorite is the pumpkin cannon. It's pretty intense. You think like a potato gun, only it's a gigantic air pressurized cannon for shooting pumpkins. They go hundreds of yards. I've got stories, but you'll have to ask me in person. Anyway, pumpkin patches in Terrebonne are always a hit. Fall Fest. So we didn't really get to this video soon enough, didn't enough forward planning. So unfortunately, Fall Festival for this year is already over. In fact, Halloween and pumpkin patches are almost over too. Dang it. But hey, next year, you gotta have this on your calendar. Fall Fest and by association slash Oktoberfest is a great festival that takes place in downtown Bend uh, at the end of September every year. The streets are lined with vendors showcasing all kinds of things. There's arts, crafts, design. There's live music, great food vendors, an Oktoberfest area with appropriate beverages, if you know what I mean. Just all kinds of stuff. Oh, the wiener dog races, those are always a hit. So if you're looking for a great time to be had the last weekend of September, Go check out the Fall Festival, Chevron Park. Okay, so yes, a few of those past options may have already passed, but that doesn't mean that we don't have more great fall options ahead. And of course, with the weather being what it is, Chevron Park is a great 
place to go check out. And I say that because basically it is your escape hatch into nature. Located just on the western edge of town, it's got 981 acres of not grass and not playground, but literally nature. Trails, trees, Tumalo Creek. There are miles and miles of trails for walking, running, biking, tons of trails. Aspen Hall is a perfect venue for gatherings, parties, weddings, and the right bit. We got married there. <laughs> now it's always a nice place to go, but I think the main reason it's so great in the fall is because there's a lot of aspen trees in the area that color up really nicely in the fall and create an incredible atmosphere. Downtown. Okay, so even if you did miss Fall Festival this year, like we did, it's still a great time to take a walk downtown. Honestly, I kind of stay away during the summer months a little bit because of all the people, but in the fall, it's a lot slower. It's got a much more uh, relaxed vibe, and it's a great time to just meander through the shops, explore all the shopping and the food, and, and really just enjoy the downtown environment. And like a bonus tip, if you're gonna go downtown, you must continue walking down along the river through Drake Park. When the leaves are turning their colors and doing their thing, it is just an incredibly beautiful time of year. Time out. Yeah, okay, maybe I just happen to like all this stuff because of the fall colors and the cooler weather. Because in truth, these are all things, well, not the pumpkin patch, but these are all, and not the fall festival. The rest of these things are things that you can do at any time of year. So my question is, why do you care? Are you thinking about moving here? If so, my team and I would love to be your real estate resource of choice. Feel free to reach out to us at cromrealestate.com because we would love to hear from you. Already live here? Well then heck, we would also still love to be your trusted real estate advisor. All right, at a minimum, you gotta smash the subscribe button and hit the little bell notification, okay? All right, moving on. High Desert Museum, yikes! Okay, look, Shannon and I have small kids, six and nine, seven and nine. <laughs> A couple of years ago, we decided to get a High Desert Museum annual membership pass. The High Desert Museum is, well, it's, it's a high desert museum. They have all kinds of great exhibits that go over, you know, really like the history of the area. From early settlers to Native Americans to the gold rush, even more modern exhibits. I mean, they just, they've got exhibits going on all the time. And that's mostly on the inside. Then. They have this huge array of plants and animals that are native to the high desert as well. I mean, the plants are just kind of there already, right? But they have otters, a fox, a porcupine, trout pond. They have all kinds of other smaller native creatures. They've got snakes and lizards, spiders. Oh, and all the birds of prey. That's a really cool exhibit. Then they even have other special uh, little exhibits or presentations with animals that aren't normally on display. I had a badger sniff my pant leg as it was walking by on a leash. <laughs> I'm glad all it was doing was sniffing. Now the point about this is because it is in the fall and the weather is a little bit cooler, the animals become a lot more active, which is obviously more entertaining for everybody, right? Oh, and back to the annual pass. You see, to my surprise, I kind of thought that the kids were gonna get bored, that, that I was gonna get bored. I mean, it's not Disneyland, you know? But I was wrong. It is like the perfect afternoon getaway. We go all the time. We're on our second year, actually coming up on our third renewal. We go all the time to explore everything that the high desert has to offer. Even though we've seen it all a bunch, it never really gets old and totally keeps the kids entertained and even us entertained. I mean, they're changing exhibits all the time. So there's always something fresh and new too. So it's a fantastic place to go and entertain the kids. In fact, I'm sure we'll be recycling this in future video videos about how to, you know, keep the kids happy. <laughs> probably. Tumalo Falls. Here's another one that's just pure beauty. You catch Tumalo Falls on a beautiful blue sky autumn day and you will never forget it. Now, two things about Tumalo Falls. One, you don't even really have to hike Tumalo Falls. You can literally drive right away up to the parking lot and see the falls. I mean, you know, there's going to be a walk from the parking lot depending on how far back you have to park because sometimes it gets kind of congested. But for the most part, it's an easy little walk. Then if you are in the market for, you know, more of an actual hike through the woods along the river, there's a six and a half mile kind of there and back hike that is also totally worthwhile. And again, totally beautiful this time of year. Finally, just because it's something that I'm personally interested in and it has to make the list, 
fishing. We gotta talk about it. Fishing in the fall is easily my favorite time of year to go. I mean, there are two times, right? Spring slash early summer and well then fall. Anywhere you wanna go, the fishing is on. The Lower Deschutes has steelhead. They're starting to work their way up, which is always a nice surprise. And in fact, lots of people really key in on the Lower Deschutes River uh, because of the steelhead. But in truth, everywhere around here is great in the fall. The kokanee are spawning, the browns are in the shallows, the Metolius River is rocking. It's actually probably one of the easiest times of the year to fish the Metolius and be successful. <laughs> the Fall River is just silly. The crooked is year by year depending on the flows, but to be honest, usually it's either good or great. So you almost can't lose there. Everywhere to go fishing is great in the fall. So again, I apologize, not much lead time here. There's only a few weeks left before we kind of start getting in, sliding into that winter time. So get out there, enjoy the weather, take part in some of these awesome activities. Because before you know it, we'll be doing a winter video with snow on the ground. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> As always, we are a resource here for you. So if you do have any follow-up questions to this video, maybe leave them down in the comments below or a surefire better way to get a hold of us is going through our website, cromrealestate.com, where we're pretty much guaranteed to respond to you there. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment on, uh, oh, I got an idea. Leave a comment on where you, what kind of winter activities you like that are not skiing or snowboarding, that are not normal things, just like maybe in town things, if you're a local and you're watching this, we'd like to know about some of those wintertime activities so we can start working on that video too. All right, that's all for now. Gotta go. Bye. Okay, yeah, a few of those options. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. I should read this first.